So today, we are going to be looking at the book of Acts so that we can see how the church began. How the church began and how we're a part of that church. So what we're going to start with today is just an introduction. Just a small beginning so that you can set the tone for the rest of this series. So we're going to look at the church and see what that is about. We're going to see how it came into existence and how it operated. And we call that the early church. In the book of Acts, we always say, that was the early church. Maybe we're the late church. I don't know. I've never heard us call the late church, but we definitely know that's called the early church. Maybe we're the on-time church. I don't know. It could be. Nonetheless, we're looking at Acts about the early church. We're going to kind of be reminded about how things work using these gears. Because gears come together, interlock, so that the machinery can work smoothly. I got an example here of some cool gear work that kind of sets the tone for us. Look how everything is all together. This is the man that invented this little machine, so that's why they're showing that. Everything turning, coordinated, working together. This is exactly how the church should be functioning. So we're going to be encouraged by the gears of the video on stage. And when you think of the church, kind of think, hey, am I working together? Am I interlocking with somebody else, getting the job done? So that's what the book of Acts is going to be getting us prepared to do. It's going to give us an overall picture. So as we hear each story in the book of Acts, we're going to see how they interlink, how they come together, how it plays a part as a gear works together to make something, another part move, and this gear makes this part move, and this gear makes this part move, and that's how the church functions. So as we f go through Acts, we're going to see all that happen, and it's going to be very cool. But we're also going to be reminded, and uh, I like what Kristen and Jeremiah mentioned earlier, how that as believers, we function together as gears interlinked individually. And our part that we play in the on-time church is very important. Okay, I'm going to show you some photographs. That's our sign outside. We got a couple of them. I think this one is just over that way. Heritage Baptist Church. Okay. And then the International Plaza entrance. That, isn't that, that's just a great Jeffersonian style building. Uh, this is the offices. Mine is not there. I don't have a window. Sorry. Yeah. My uh, admin does, but I don't. I'm not bitter. But this is the office area. This is the chapel. This is the first building of Heritage Baptist Church on this property, okay? And they had, and of course it had to have a steeple. Every church back then had steeples. So this one has a cheap steeple. Now we call it the chapel. Back then it was a church, Heritage Baptist Church. A lot of people get married there and buried there as well. Here's the big worship center entrance, the main one from the parking lot. Um... I bet most of you, some of you probably park out there and walk towards that and come inside. But these are our buildings. But guess what? I didn't show you Heritage Baptist Church. I just showed you the buildings of Heritage Baptist Church. I just showed you where we meet as Heritage Baptist Church. Okay, let me show you the real Heritage Baptist Church. I went around Wednesday night just taking photographs of as many different people as I could. So you see all ages especially. You see children, you see teens, you see adults, and you see a few senior adults. We are the church. As our What's Up says, say it with me, I am the church. Say it with me, I am the church. See the blank there, that blank spot? That's you. Your picture could be up there at this very moment if I had gotten around to you. <laughs> to take yours already 
I would shove you in there because you are part of the church just like these people are. I am the church. Now, well, let me make a clarification, make something very clear so there's no misunderstanding. <clears throat> when I say I am the church, that is only true because I have Jesus as my Savior. Just by coming to Sunday school, <clears throat> our blast zone, does not make you the church. There has to be a salvation experience that you've experienced so that you become a member of God's family. Then you are the church. Until then, you're not. You really go to church is what happens then. Hey, I'm going to go to the Heritage Baptist Church. So hopefully everybody here has made that profession of faith in Jesus and you can say, huh, I am the church. <laughs> I hope that's true. And if it's not, well, you can do something about that, even today. And I would encourage you to talk to your mom and dad or a leader, maybe before you leave today. I am the church. Now, the word church, C-H-U-R-C-H, church, comes from a Greek word called ekklesia. Say it with me, ekklesia. Now you say you can speak Greek. Ecclesia. Now, why are we learning a Greek word? Because when the Bible was written, Greek was the common language. It was kind of like what today is English. People want to learn English, not because they're English <coughs> or American, but because they know it's the language of the world that if you really can't communicate well with other people unless you learn English. And that's why people come to our church on Wednesday night to learn English as a second language <clears throat> because they've lived here from another country and they go, you know, I got to learn English. I got to get a, I got to know things. But English, if the Bible was written today, it would probably be written in English first and foremost. But back then it was Greek. Everybody spoke Greek. Everybody like, however, luo, lue, lue. That's all the Greek I learned and minored in Greek at Liberty, the, which is pretty embarrassing. <clears throat> Luo, Lue, Luis. Okay. Sorry, that doesn't even impress me anymore. But if I did know Greek, it doesn't matter because all we need to know is one word, ecclesia. Now, ecclesia means called out ones. Called out ones, as in called out from the world, called into the family of God. Okay, that's kind of what it's selling. And also the idea of assembly <clears throat> so pretty much we're all assembled here because we're called out and so ecclesia means the called out ones who have assembled themselves but we kind of shorten and say church which I think is a lot simpler heritage Baptist called out ones and assembled does not really flow so we say church ecclesia say it with me ecclesia <coughs> Again, go, when you go home, brag to your parents that you now can speak some Greek. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If we decided we wanted to meet in a restaurant this morning on Sunday morning, would that be church? Ah, think about it. If we decided to go have blast zone at a restaurant, would that be church? Yes, it would be, because we're there. Now, if you're in China, a lot of times you don't have a church building. You meet in a home. So when they gather as a church in a home, is that church? Yes. Okay, let's just say Saturday night, something horrific happened. What if the tornado that flew through the area a few weeks ago had touched down here at Heritage Baptist Church and leveled the place. Nobody got hurt, fortunately. Fortunately, for real, nobody got hurt. But it was on a Saturday night. Nobody's here. We come on a Sunday morning, thank you, and this place is leveled. It's just debris field everywhere. Would we have church? Yeah. We could have it in the flat parking lot. Do we need chairs? Do we need lights? Do we need a roof over our heads or walls? No. 
those are just buildings where we meet in. I am the church. I am the church. Say it with me. Technically, you didn't say it with me because I was swallowing, so my bad. <coughs> Sorry. Miss Sue took good care of me, bringing me water. I am the church. I, you know what? I think you guys are getting convinced about this. That you really believe that I, you, we are the church. Okay, another name for the church is body of Christ. Body of Christ. Ephesians 1.22 says, And God placed all things under his, Jesus' feet, kind of figurative language, and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The church, which is his body. So when Jesus entered the world, he took on a physical form. We know it. When you think about it, this is the cool, probably the coolest aspect of heaven. When we go to heaven, he's going to have a body. And we're going to be able to touch him like he can touch us. He really took on a body on earth and of course, he got a newer, better one when he went to heaven. So now, while he was on the earth, he represented God and showed clearly his love for people, especially by dying on the cross in our place, paying for our sins. He showed that love, but he had to have a body to do it. His work continues through us because now we are his body, literally, we have the hands and the feet and all the rest of us that make up the church, that make up what he needs to now clearly go show God's love to the world. I mean, we are his main way of getting the word out because we're his body. And the Bible says he is the head, which means he's over it, okay? He's the head, we're the body. Every one of us is a physical representation of Jesus himself if you're a believer. When you say, I am the church, say it. I am the church. Then you're saying, you know what? I'm representing Jesus down here. I am the church. I am the body of Christ and I'm representing him right now. So as he loved the world, I got to love the world too. Now, here's something unique about the body of Christ. There's a big body and a smaller body. Yeah. The big body is called the universal church. I know. Universal simply means every, okay, every. If something is universal, it means it's every thing or every one. So, what we're saying here is from a, a, a verse in 1 Corinthians 12, 13 that says, For we were all baptized by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given one Spirit to drink. Another verse says, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. So the verse is saying that all believers in the world or a member of God's, of, of the, the body of Christ. Every believer in China, in Russia, in Africa, South America, and America, we're all one big body with Jesus as a head. And that's why we say universal. Every believer ever in the past, present, or future is part of the universal big body of Christ. Then there's the smaller body. We call this the local church, the local church. Paul wrote this. Paul, an apostle, and all the brothers with me to the churches in Galatia. So what Paul is making clear is that there are more than just one church in Galatia. 
So there are local churches. You go a few miles down the road and there's another church in Galatia. You keep walking and you come to another church in Galatia. There were churches everywhere in Galatia. So what he is making clear to us is not only is the big universal church that we're all part of the body of Christ, believers across the world from all times, but you can't not be a part of a local body of believers because it is there at a local church, which, what is our local church called? Yes, say it with me, Heritage Baptist Church. Good, I'm glad you didn't say some other place. You've been really confused. Yes, your moms and dads brought you to, say it with me, Heritage Baptist Church. This is your, not universal church, because that's kind of like, we don't really ever see that one or attend that one. We attend the local church. The local body of Christ is right here on this grounds. Not, not that we have to meet here. I mean, if we met out in the parking lot, that would be fine. We would still be the local body of Christ because I am the church. You are the church. We all are the church. And is it at the church that a few main things have to happen? We experience the worship that we've enjoyed so far. We get the teaching from God's word at the local church. And we also have what they call fellowship with other believers. And I guess a lot of you had that during our playtime. You got to interact with other Christians. Fellowship. That's what has to happen at the local church. And it does not happen in a universal church. So that's why God gave us the big body. And he gave us the little body. And I would say this is one body that probably needs to gain weight. Okay? Because you want it to grow. So weight gain good with small body. Just think about that for a moment. <laughs> In the first chapter of Acts, Jesus speaks to his disciples before he ascends to heaven. And he speaks to them and also to the future church. Now you got to understand, in the first chapter of Acts, the church had not been born yet. It hadn't been around forever, okay? It had a beginning. You're going to find out about that beginning later. That's not what we're talking about today. This is just an introduction to the book of Acts and especially to the idea of church. But he wanted to talk to his disciples and tell them, therefore telling us, and give a command about probably one of the most important responsibilities that we have as the church. And I want you to, of course... Uh, uh, not shockwave, but look it up. <laughs> you know what? I think we forgot to put the look it up in. <laughs> Acts 1.8, look it up. Seriously, you know where it's at. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans, Ephesians, and Acts. Okay, I helped you. I'm not going to do any more. You're on your own. People. Acts 1-8. Raise it up if you found it. I want to know how many have found it already. I cheated. I already had mine marked, so that's, I'm not judging you harshly. Okay, put your Bibles down, open it up, find Acts 1-8, and we'll read it together. Obviously, it's a familiar verse, but it's very important for us to lay some groundwork here. Jesus talking again to his disciples before he bodily, real body, ascended to heaven, which we will see when we go there. This is very cool. Jesus saying, but you, soon to be church, will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And that's what we're going to talk about later, not now. And you will be my, and this is what we want to talk about now, witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We have to be witnesses. 
We have to be going out into the world, our neighborhoods and our cities and our countries and our everywhere because we are the physical representation of Jesus. He is our main method of getting the word out and we got to be willing to do that as the church is one of our main functions to share his message to the lost people of the world. Bow your head and close your eyes. Let's pray together. Lord, we're looking forward to learning about the church and how important it is because we're it and we need to know how we should be working as a church. How important it is to be like the gears, meshing, getting things done, pleasing you. Lord, you love us so much and you care for us. Even when we make mistakes, we know you're forgiving and kind and we know that we can call on your name. And I pray that if those here who have never asked Jesus to be their Savior would consider doing that today, even before they go home. In your name we pray, amen.